But before that, um, given that the Channel Islands were the only part of the British Isles to be occupied by the Germans during World War II, we have hundreds of fortifications to show for it. And while most are visible, there are many which people have never seen before. Yes, ITV Channel was given exclusive access to some of those hidden bunkers, towers and fortresses with the help of Jersey war tours. And our reporter Marina Jenkins went along for us. Scattered across the island, fortifications dot the coastline. Many are distinctive. People pass them every day. But some are still shrouded in mystery. This Napoleonic tower at Grevdelec was taken over by the Germans in World War II. It looks like for four years it was a bit of a holiday camp for the folks stationed here. They've arrived here and have won the lottery of where they could have been posted. It could have been the Russian front or even the Norman front. They've ended up here. There are more than 500 fortifications across the island. Jersey War Tours is a non-profit group with special access to a few of the sites. Ones that aren't usually open to the public or in unusual places. When people come here, they're really able to interact with history, like holding these deactivated World War II guns to picking up the very phone that was used to communicate with German commanders about D-Day. On the 6th of June, 1944, the Battle of Normandy began. The white dots in this radar footage shows clusters of Allied planes flying over the channel to northern France. The anti-aircraft gun on the roof is going to see this, but it's not enough power to actually hit them. So the American troops will cut the peninsula in half, and by July 13th, um, any view from the tower is now of American-occupied France and not German-occupied France. So they're facing the enemy effectively, and an invasion is likely at any point. While some bunkers sit in plain sight, others are in more secluded spots. On the border of St. Lawrence and St. Peter, the Germans built their battle headquarters. Suitably in the middle of the island, the furthest point from any potential invasion on them. It's kind of well hidden, number one, deliberately so. So it sits in the middle of a field. Um, it was originally disguised to look like a house. So it has chimney pots on the side, would have had fake French windows inserted. And any aerial shots? Exactly, yeah. Every one of these sites here means it's not in Normandy where it can do a lot more damage. This bomb-proof fortress spans two floors. Inside, you'll find offices, communication rooms and living quarters. The thick concrete walls are even lined with wooden panelling. It's a bit more homely, it's a command bunker, but it also acts to absorb shrapnel if there's an explosion and uh, allows them to pin things up and draw on it. What does something like E2 mean? Yeah, so the equipment here was probably radio equipment and this would have meant something to the operator and again, written in World War II and it's still remaining in place. Together with the Channel Islands Occupation Society, Philip and his team have only recently got the keys to the site. Uh, and it means that we can take more visitors um, to sites that they wouldn't normally get to see. So it's another piece of the occupation that's preserved? That's right, and hopefully the funds coming into sites like this through the tours will help add more value to preserving it and restoring it for the future. Hitler's Atlantic Wall scarred the Channel Islands. But every bunker and artefact uncovered preserves the dark history of the occupation and celebrates the freedoms of today. Marina Jenkins, ITV News.